Shalom, everyone. Friends, a few years ago, on a beautiful Sunday morning, I must confess to you that I nearly started a riot at Upper Crust Bakery. <laughs> Since Neighborhood bakeries are not normally places that you uh, associate with civil unrest. Uh, you might be wondering how exactly this happened. First of all, in order to fully appreciate the story, you have to have tasted the cinnamon rolls that I'll pronounce bakery. They are some of you have them. They are sweet. They are flaky. They are delicious. They melt upon your tongue. This is probably this is a cruel sermon to give to people who haven't had dinner yet. This is probably due to the fact that there must be at least an entire stick of butter in each and every one of them. The reason I was afraid that I might be responsible for triggering a violent uprising at the bakery was this. On this particular Sunday morning in question, I stood in line at the bakery. There's always a line at Upper Crust on Sunday morning, waiting to place my order. When it was finally my turn, I said, I'd like 35 cinnamon rolls. <laughs> The person behind the counter did not skip a beat, folded together three large bakery boxes, and began to load my cinnamon rolls into the boxes. But, and you can call me paranoid, I got some rather unfriendly looks from the people in back of me. At least some of whom had intended to buy cinnamon rolls that morning, no doubt, and who thus looked on in helpless dismay as I cleaned upper crust out of all their cinnamon rolls for the rest of the morning. cinnamon rolls on Sunday morning anyway. The simple answer, the unvarnished truth is this. I was making good on a bribe of my confirmation class. Yes, it's a bribe. From time to time, when I really, really want my confirmation kids to pay attention to a question that I am asking them to respond to, I will say something like this. Okay, guys, this one's for cinnamon rolls from Upper Crust. If everybody in class can piece together the correct answer to the following question, everybody gets cinnamon rolls next week. Now you might say, Rabbi Fulberg, you're being kind of harsh on yourself. That's not really a bribe, properly speaking. That's an incentive. That's a reward. In fact, it's not unlike what they used to do back in the days of the shtetl, when the teacher would put honey on the Hebrew letters so that the little ones beginning their Hebrew studies could lick the honey off the page and know that, that learning Torah is sweet. Well, all that may be true, but when you get down to it, upper crust cinnamon rolls are still a bribe. It's a way of getting the kids to focus on what we're talking about. In fact, I will even joke with them about this incentive, and I'll say, I will stoop to anything to get you guys to pay attention, especially on Sunday morning. The Hebrew word for bribe is shochad, and the Torah has a great deal to say about bribery, about shochad, and a lot of it is concentrated in this week's Torah portion. A famous verse reads as follows, Belotikach shochad, you shall not take a bribe, because bribes, they blind the eyes of the wise, and they upset the pleas of those who are innocent. And when you think about it, in addition to cinnamon rolls, we use the bribe dynamic with considerable frequency in our day-to-day -day lives. Rewarding children for good behavior is or can be a kind of bribe. And parents wrestle with the propriety or impropriety of offering their kids rewards for desirable behavior. We want to teach them in Jewish terms, ideally, that is the rabbi say, what's the reward of doing a mitzvah? The opportunity to do another mitzvah and not another hour of TV. We want them to be internally and not externally motivated. And yet when you think about it, even the Torah text itself sometimes resorts to a kind of bribery in trying to get the Israelites to toe the line. After all, does not Moses promise his people all sorts of great rewards, good crops, fertile farm animals, peace, in exchange for keeping the covenant. And isn't that a kind of bribe as well? But when this week's Torah portion condemns bribery, it's not talking about the various incentives that businesses offer their employees to motivate them to sell more widgets, or the promised rewards that we um, dangle in front of our children's noses to get them to behave. The context of the Torah portion is justice, judges, trials and courts of law, and the portion is concerned about judges or other officials being offered bribes to interpret the law in somebody's favor, to side with the guy who pays up and has the money. 
In beautiful poetic language, the Torah condemns bribery and the way that it corrupts judges and perverts justice. The Torah says, you shall not take bribes, for bribes blind the eyes of the discerner, that is the judge, and upset the pleas of the innocent, causing people who are innocent and powerless to be punished. It's possible to take these principles about bribery and to run off with them in many different directions. And in this election season, I have been pondering these verses of scripture, people are chuckling as soon as I say election season. <laughs> I've been pondering these verses of scripture in my own mind in relationship to what we rather dryly call campaign finance reform. When you think about it, after all, are not the enormous sums of money poured into re-election campaigns by all different sorts of groups, groups we like, groups we don't like, in exchange presumably for favoritism when the recipient of the donation is later elected, isn't that really at root a kind of bribery? At worst, the influence of money in our political system caused one jaded soul to quip, quote, we no longer have a democracy, we have an auction. Of course, in order for a bribe to work, somebody has to be willing to be bribed. Is it true, as we sometimes hear actors say on TV and tough guys in the movies, is it true that everybody has his price? Is it true that everybody, even you and I, can be bought with the proper incentive? This is a very old question. It's at the root of a story that I found that is told about a real historical figure, Rabbi Schmelke of Nicholsburg, who you have to feel sorry of just because his name was Schmelke. <laughs> the story goes that this particular rabbi, back in the days when he was functioning actively as a rabbi and a dayan, a judge, in the Eastern European town of Nicholsburg, that he used to always keep an odd art installation on the wall of the Beit Dean, his court. Hanging on the wall was his walking stick and a duffel bag. Once, one of the benefactors who supported him and the community, one of the mockers, one of the big givers, asked him what this strange wall hanging, what this walking stick and this duffel bag, this art installation was about. He said, it is said in the story that he answered as follows. He said, you community leaders need to know very well that I show no favoritism, that I do not throw decisions, I do not play favorites. With me, it is what it is, that's what he says. As our sages say, the law can overturn a mountain. And if any one of you is not satisfied with this, behold, I am always ready and willing to leave the rabbinate, to take my staff and my duffel bag and wander and go wherever I have to go, even if it means, heaven forbid, returning and begging at the doorways of those who would be charitable toward me. Why did he keep his walking stick in his duffel bag? So let him and other people know that he didn't have to do injustice, he could always pick up and leave. I smiled when I read this, thinking that if David Magnet, the famous playwright known for his tough guy dialogue, were retelling the story, he might have Rabbi Schmelke say something like, nobody buys or sells this rabbi. <laughs> One of the things that makes the Torah sacred to me is the way that it pushes us to wrestle with issues of holiness and human decency that were pressing in the Torah's own time millennia ago, but are no less pressing to us because human nature does not change, and the needs of justice don't change. This text about bribes, about integrity, about doing what is right, about a refusal to be bought and a refusal to be sold, and yes, about cleaning the bakery out of cinnamon rolls on a Sunday morning, this speaks to us as much today, I believe, as it did in ancient days. May you and I together always be inspired by the words of Torah. May we always do what we know to be right, rather than what is convenient or expedient or even lucrative. And with that, I wish you Shabbat Shalom.